backwards. I think so. Is it first? Okay, go back to zero. I'll go back to one. Is that one? Okay, go to one. That's the last one. Okay. Should be number two. Okay, when we began to research this uh, underground stuff and these tunnels, we found uh, newspaper articles that stated, and this is the Los Angeles Times, Wednesday, June 28, 1989, the secret of Moscow's underworld. Moscow also has tunnels under it, as does much of the Soviet Union. Um, and next slide. Next. Uh, this is the Dulce, New Mexico area. Get my little wizard zip gun here. This is the small town of Dulce, New Mexico. Everybody is making a big mistake calling this the Dulce base, the Dulce underground base, the Dulce papers, the Dulce this, the Dulce that. It causes confusion. I don't know how many people have gone to Dulce, New Mexico, walked all day around that little town, and have come back and said, there's nothing in Dulce, New Mexico. And they're absolutely right. There never was. Except some very nice people who are terrified. North of Dulce, however, there is an area called the Archuleta Mesa, up here. Under this mesa is an underground installation of immense proportions. Up Seguro Canyon here, there's an area right in here where there are 400 foot cliffs, out of which people who have gone on expeditions that knew exactly where the base was, because they came and talked to those of us who know and found out where to go, have gone up to these peaks across Seguro Canyon from Archuleta Mesa and observed the mesa and these cliffs and the surrounding area. They have seen UFOs fly over this mesa. They have seen them stop over the mesa and showers of sparks come down. Nobody knows what it means. They have seen craft fly in and out of this 400 foot cliff area here. They have seen strange marks on the ground from the air. They have uh, uh, reported during the night hearing what sounds like CB radios or police radios uh, coming from in this area. Uh, and I'm sure you've all heard what that sounds like. But there's nothing up there. There's not supposed to be anything up there. The old timers who live in the area will tell you that, uh, and, and that's on the Colorado side up here, the old timers who live up here on the Colorado side, will tell you that back in the 50s, there was a logging road built up in there, and logging trucks went back and forth every day, but they never brought out any logs. <laughs> Next uh, slide. This is the Colorado side of Archuleta Mesa. Here's the logging road that they built. You can see it. But all the way up here and then up into the Mesa, it's, it's not being used now. This is all under the Hickorio Apache Indian Reservation and Archuleta Mesa is considered to be their holy land, their holy ground. It's an excellent security uh, proposition for them. They didn't have to build fences or anything. The Indians keep people away. The Indians see the strange lights and the craft flying back and forth, and they attributed this to their religious beliefs that they have seen all through their history, that it's in their writings, in their tales, in their stories. You can get some of the most incredible stories about UFOs from American Indians when they will talk to you. Next slide, please. These are some more of the uh, Photographs from the Rand uh, Symposium. Next. Oh, let me see. This is a page from an Air Force textbook. Space, uh, let me see. I forgot the name of it. I think it's uh, Physics and Space Technology, I believe. But anyway, in this textbook, it says the most commonly described alien is about three and one half feet tall, has a round head or helmet, arms reaching to or below his knees, and is wearing a silvery space suit or coveralls. Other aliens appear to be essentially the same as Earthmen, while still others have 
particularly wide wraparound eyes and mouths with very thin lips, and there is a rare group reported as about four feet tall, weight of around 35 pounds, and covered with thick hair or fur, and in parentheses, you say of clothing with a question mark. Members of this last group are described as being extremely strong. Human fear and hostility. It says, besides the foregoing reasons, contacting humans is downright dangerous. Might be one reason they want to keep themselves secret if they're really here. This is a textbook. This is a page out of a U.S. Air Force Academy textbook. Next page. This is another page out of the same textbook. It says, this leaves us with the unpleasant possibility of alien visitors to our planet, or at least of alien-controlled UFOs. When this textbook got into the hands of researchers, they excised the entire chapter from the textbook. Next. Let's see if the name is on here. No. Okay, next. This is Janet 146D. You want to know why people don't report these things? Want to know why more airline pilots don't speak up? Why more captains of ships don't speak up? It's because of Janet 146, Joint United States Canadian uh, Communications Instructions for Reporting. And notice it says vital intelligence sightings. Now, in this regulation, it says, if you make this report, you can be thrown in jail for talking about any of the information in the report. You can be fined. You can lose your license. But if you don't make the report, it's okay to talk about it. Next. And this just goes through telling you what's in here. Next. 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 Wait a minute, go back to the last. Oh, here we go. Stay on that. Unidentified flying objects. Just want to make sure that you know that this specifically stated in this report that they are to be reported. Next. Okay, let's go through this. Go ahead. And go ahead. We just don't have time to cover every paragraph and all of the pertinent information. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. You see how extensive this is. Keep going. Keep going. This is some footage that I put in here because someplace I get uh, to where I'm going and they have assured me they will have a video projector and they don't. So you'll see a little bit on Kennedy assassination here. I use these photographs um, because they're, he, this man was extremely human and photogenic and charismatic. So much so that if you hated his politics, you still couldn't help like John Kennedy. Most of the pictures you're going to see came out of this magazine, next, this magazine, next, and this book, next. Go ahead. Can you imagine pictures like this of Richard Nixon? <laughs> Lyndon Johnson? George Bush? Gerald Ford? Oops. <laughs> Next. Next. Look at that. I'm not going to ask you this because some people are probably not going to be able to raise their hand. I just wonder how many men in here have kissed your father lately. Next. This is a photograph of Kennedy after he been shot in the throat. Jacqueline is looking at him in horror. He's clutching his throat. Next. This is William Greer beginning to turn around. You can see his hand here, his arm. You can see the end of the gun barrel right there. Next. Now you can see him, here's his hand, his arm, the gun is right behind this flash of reflection here. You can see him looking directly back at the president. Next slide. 
Next. Now, you can see the top of Kellerman's head right here. People argue that that's a reflection off the top of Kellerman's head. It is not. You can also see Kellerman's hand is on the wheel. Kellerman, that's his arm and hand, is actually driving the car at that point. Kellerman is a Secret Service agent who was the passenger in the front seat. Pardon? No. No. John Connolly, Colin Connolly was sitting directly behind Agent Kellerman. And his wife was sitting directly behind Greer. That's John Connolly's wife. And that's John Connolly. Next. This is Kennedy's grave. Next. Everybody wonders why Jacqueline Kennedy never said anything. And that's the reason right there. Where were her children? They were being guarded by the Secret Service. Who just shot her husband? It was the Secret Service. Who the hell was she going to tell? And what was she going to tell them? To this day, her children are the guard of the Secret Service, and so is she. Next. It was not Lee Harvey Oswald, ladies and gentlemen, because that's him right there, standing in the doorway of the Dallas Book Depository as the motorcade drove by. The Central Intelligence Agency has agents in the civilian community writing books and making statements to keep you confused. They will tell you that's not Lee Harvey Oswald, it's somebody who looks like him. What was Jack Ruth's part in? I don't know, but he certainly had a part. Next. There he is again. Lee Harvey Oswald. We have done body proportion measurement comparison. We have studied the clothing. We have studied the jawline, the features of the face. Next. And it is Lee Harvey Oswald. Next. And that's us if we don't do something quick. Next. Now, everybody wants to know, why do we have to have a one world government? Why is it that they won't let us have these things that we know will cure disease? Why are they so hard on homeopathic medicine? Why this, why that, why this, why that? It's simple, folks. Once you really get into it, there is no doubt about it, there is a serious population problem. At the end of World War II, well, actually during the war, they did a study to try to determine the effect of the returning soldiers from the war upon the economy. What the people who made the study projected was that there was going to be a whole bunch of babies born. They did a study again in 1957 which stated that the exponential increase of the population would ensure that the population would double between 1957 and 1990, and it did. They said that if something wasn't done, the increase in the use of insecticides, toxic chemical waste, effluent sewage, the pollution of the air, the use of fossil fuels, the use of timber, the increased need for raw materials was going to put us in a crisis because they said that if something wasn't done to stop the growth of the population, the population would double again 28 years from 1990. And it will. And then we will need twice as many trees, twice as many homes, twice as many cars, twice as much oil, twice as much food, twice as much everything. We will be putting twice as much sewage into the earth, twice as much pollution into the atmosphere, twice as much toxic waste material, 